Okay, so let's now look at the next process, which is perform integrated change control. The most important thing to remember here, and the reason why this is within the integration management knowledge area under monitoring and controlling, is because when any change to the project scope occurs, and that's the purpose here, its impact is evaluated across the entire project. So perform integrated change control is focused on any changes to the project scope. Whereas the previous process we looked at, monitor and control project work, gives its focus on managing the way that the scope is actually executed. There's the difference. The discipline here is, is that whenever a change is raised, it is always evaluated across the whole of the project. You'll remember the project management plan with its various plans within it, schedule, cost, quality, and so on. Well, every single change will be evaluated against all of those aspects so that an understanding of the true impact should the change be implemented is fully understood. Let's then look at the inputs here. First of all, the project management plan, as I've just said, the scope, schedule and cost baselines are an important input here, as well as the other plans, which provide the backdrop against which any change can be analysed and considered. The work performance reports, since this will give analysed information on the true status of the project and its forecast, so that this can be used as a bearing when considering any changes. Change requests, of course, are one of the main inputs here, since all changes have to pass through integrated change control before any decisions can be made about whether or not to implement them. Enterprise environmental factors. Going back to our extreme example of a project on an oil rig, as part of analysing true progress, you may have to send divers undersea to actually determine the impact to any suggested changes. So we need to take cognizance of these as part of the change control analytical process. And organisational process assets, as these might provide templates and tools, guidelines and procedures against which we must comply. Again, think of the oil rig and think through the potential consequences of agreeing or not any potential changes. Let's look at the outputs. Of course, once a change has been considered across the whole of the project, then it's from this process where approved change requests emanate from. And once these have been approved, they would then be fed back into direct and managed project work where the changes are implemented. As a consequence of approving any change requests, there will be updates needed to the project management plan and its various sections, as well as updates to other project documents. For example, if you have an issue log or a change register, these would need to be updated as well. For example, you may have some management documents that now need to be changed in some way as a result of approving a change request. And of course, most importantly, the change log. This is where all changes and their status and their history are captured. And the change log is an important management tool to make sure that changes are done under control. Looking at the tools, there's just three. First of all, meetings, you can well imagine as a result of analysing changes and considering potential actions. Remember, a change control is merely a request. And to look into it, we need to think through the impact if the answer was to proceed with this. But also, of course, the way in which the change is to be implemented, there may be several options. So having meetings along with appropriate expert judgment makes a lot of sense. In particular, you may well have a change control board implemented on your project. And if so, its membership, its authority will be included within the project management plan. And so that meetings may indeed be such change control meetings being run by the change control board. If you do have a change control board, normally they have the authority to say yes or no to changes. So they will be responsible for reviewing all changes. Exactly how far the authority of a change control board goes will depend on a project by project basis. Change control tools are often some form of information system as the flow of changes may be quite complex. And it may be something as simple as a spreadsheet or something else where the true status of all changes 
will help the Change Control Board, for example, to not get overwhelmed by information. In my experience, I remember one particular project way back in the 80s where a complete rethink was done on the way a particular product was to be manufactured. And in doing so, this had major implications on the structure and functionality of the product concerned. And we would have a change coming in from America, as it happened, on a, say, a Tuesday. And on a Thursday afternoon, we'd have a change to the change that was issued on the Tuesday. And with that sort of environment, it can very quickly overwhelm anyone who's trying to remain in control, let alone the project manager. So change control tools and systems are quite important here.